I've got my setup here. I've got my watercolor paper. Everything is dry now um, from yesterday. I've got paint, soft bristle brush, paper towel, water. Um, and then I'm also going to experiment. I have just table salt in this jar, and it leaves this texture right here. When you put salt onto water, it starts to absorb the water and creates this kind of bumpy, cool texture. And then after it dries, you rub off the salt the next day. This one that looks kind of like a planet, maybe, is used by putting rubbing alcohol on it. So if you have rubbing alcohol in your house, you can just drop it on. And I'll show you how it's done onto it. And it kind of dries up some spots and leaves a cool texture to it. But today, um, I told you yesterday to not do any circles that touch each other because we we're going to let them dry completely first. So today I want you to do some that touch and we're going to see what happens when we overlap transparent colors. And It's going to create a new color in those overlapping sections, kind of like a Venn diagram. And yesterday we also went over a wet brush technique where you just use wet brush directly into wet paint and paint it on. But we also did wet on wet where you make a clear water puddle and drop water in. So we'll do both of those again to review. Okay, so first I'm going to take yellow. I like this yellow. I'm going to paint this big circle. And again, I'm going to overlap with the green. And it kind of makes a yellow green, as you'd expect there. It's okay if you get some pull off. They blend like that. That's okay. The green kind of resaturated there with water and bled into the yellow. That's fine. There we go. So where they overlap, it creates a new, slightly different color, which is kind of cool. I'm going to do this circle now. Let's do blue. What will happen when I put blue on top of yellow? Any ideas? Blue on top of yellow? And again, you have to work pretty quickly. Keep your brushes wet. start to get new colors as they overlap and the circles push and pull which ones are coming forward which is going back. I love that. They are those overlap. And this does kind of create a green color there. I'll do a wet on wet on this one. Let's see what happens there. So wet on wet I'm applying water first. That clear puddle. When I'm going to drop in a color, let's do blue again. Wet on wet's kind of fun because it, it does the work for you. You just drop in the color and it spreads on its own. It does take longer to dry, so remember not to um, move your paper so you don't get it spilling out of its borders with gravitational pull as you move the paper. Okay, so that'll make be nice. And I also showed you yesterday wet on wet. If you're like, oh, that's just too much water. I'm recording right now. Okay, so if that's just too much water, you can pull it out. Okay, not right now, but you can ask someone else for help. I'm recording right now.
you can pull it out like that. Okay, so now to show you the salt technique and the uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol technique. So not just any old alcohol, rubbing alcohol. And if you don't have it in your first aid kit, you don't need to uh, use it. You don't need to go buy it. It's not mandatory. But if you have it, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to do wet on wet again in this circle. down a lot of water. Sometimes it helps to lower yourself to a different angle to see what parts of the paper are shiny that you've touched with water. On the wet on wet, because you are painting with clear, so it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. I'm going to do blue again. Let it spread. In the beauty of wet on wet, it does a lot of the work for you. You just touch in the color and it spreads on its own. And it has kind of more organic feel to it. If you like the water being a little more unpredictable. Oh, the circle. Okay. And then you just take salt, regular table salt, and drop it on. And you leave it there till tomorrow. Leave it there till tomorrow. Um, this is just fine iodized salt. Let me zoom in a little bit there. So you can see it. Um, here is where I rubbed it off today as I did it yesterday. Oops, and I shouldn't have touched that wet paint. It's all right. So I rubbed it off on this one, and it, that's what it looks like there. Okay, so salt. This one is salt. This one is salt. This one is alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. Okay, don't go like grab your parents' tequila. Don't do that. I am not condoning that. Um, we'll do rubbing alcohol next. It usually comes in a big bottle, kind of like hydrogen peroxide. They'll say rubbing al alcohol. Um, let's do this one with some rubbing alcohol. So I'm going to do wet on wet again. Overlap into this yellow. And when I overlap colors, you can do whatever you want, but I try to think about colors that will harmonize. If you do complements, remember you're going to get brown, as we proved on our color wheel. But if you do analogous colors, colors that are close to it, then you'll get colors that are similar. So I'm going to do red, because red and yellow are both warm colors, and I know. In the middle, I'm going to get orange. It can be pretty. Again, I'm doing the wet on wet technique where I made a puddle of clear water. 